right, and we are back, and Mike Wargo has joined us. How you he doing? Is my, my man, hey, how you been? Doing great. How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. It is. You can hear me good. Yeah, we can yes. hear you just fine. You're looking good. You're smiling. Dude, I can't tell you uh, how awesome it was. I know I've said this to you a couple times, Mike, but having us down for the Notre Dame game, getting to watch – Ohio State Notre Dame with you in Pittsburgh getting to watch Ohio State again with Ohio getting to watch Ohio State versus Notre Dame with Ohio State's Rudy I mean that was so freaking cool dude thank you so much for having us uh, over to Pittsburgh this past season thank you guys as well that was a great time we're very grateful when you come on out and that was just an awesome time and uh, I'm flattered you said that it's really really kind of you guys are awesome I always love doing the show you know, you know, Mike, I'm really excited. We we might have to take another trip over because I saw this uh, post that you put up that there's going to be a uh, little party if uh, a certain team has their national title vacated. Is that correct? That's right. We got uh, the horror ball. <laughs> How about that? Um, yeah, we are going to do that. Uh, hopefully the NCAA will do the right thing in a timely manner and take away that ill-gotten – national title that was stolen because you know we all know what happened and we've talked about it many times so you know i want to see a repo truck show up and get that national cfp championship trophy gone and what we're going to do and, and we're going to have a big party just like the game watch at Notre dame we're going to have the buckeye cake uh we're going to have the buckeye pep band need some help on that one from you guys and it's just going to be a full party and we're going to vote on what game we're going to we're get Mike Spear Bar to show a game. Obviously, the season isn't on right now. So we're getting Mike Spear Bar to show one of the greatest Buckeye games of all time. So I'm going to do a poll. I'm thinking Alabama, you know, 2015, 2003, Miami or, you know, Michigan game. A lot of people say Ryan Day's game in 2019 where he won the first time against Michigan. I think that would be appropriate, too. And I really hope he gets this one next year for his sake. So we have a new slogan. You can pick this up over there in PA too. We have it's BTB year. It's beat the blue, beat the That's bums, right. whatever you want to call it. Uh, BTB. That is that is the slogan this year. We're gonna beat the brakes off the blue. Right. Um, I, I I feeling really good about this season, but the way last season ended was, boy, that was rough. And yeah. you went to the Cotton Bowl, Wargo. Tell us about your trip to the Cotton Bowl and how I did. how how that. I went to the Cotton Bowl, uh, had a great time in Dallas, did a lot of, uh, I got a hotel right by, you know, with the JFK assassination. So I did my assassination research, um, didn't come up with anything different, but it was just a really historical place. And it's really something when you see it right there. But, you know, it was a great time. The Alumni Club of Dallas, it was, it was really awesome. But you know what that game felt like? It, it didn't feel like a bowl, an old school bowl game that we used to love and enjoy. That used to be a, a, a reward for the players. It was exciting. It really felt like watching a practice. Like it just didn't seem like they took it seriously. This is my opinion. It just it, it didn't seem like they wanted to be there at all. And you know that that game was very disappointing to me. And I think that's where college football is going. I, you know the playoff system. Thank God these bowl games are going to have relevance because you know if it's a bowl game outside of the playoff system. I'm going to seriously reconsider going because that was just not – it just took away the fun out of that, that game. That's my opinion. Yeah, if, it's going to be a bowl, if it's going to be a bowl game outside of the playoff system uh, and Ohio State's in it, I, I think we got a lot to be concerned about. With the yeah. expansion of 12 teams, We're not doing very well. We better not be excluded. Point, Chris. That's a great point. Um, but, you know, it's just – I'll still go. I, I enjoyed the trip. It was fun. Got to see a lot of Buckeye friends. But – that's the first time I really felt the effects of the way college football has progressed. Like, okay, you know, nobody's – people are opting out of the bowl game. The transfer portal's going crazy. We had, you know, it, it just – that's the first time I really see the effects of modern college football. And I think a lot of it is good, but I think a lot of it is kind of like an experiment, like a Frankenstein has gotten out of control. And that's that's my opinion. Yeah. Here's a question from one of the uh, watchers right now. Uh, this is from Brian Oberst. How hard is it to walk on and make the team? So we're going we're going back to a little bit of the Rudy story here for you. Yeah. Well. Now, for me, this is a long time ago. This was 1991. So what is that? 33 years ago. So I'll tell you my story. Um, 
I was a guy in high school and, you know, I had pretty much zero athletic ability. I didn't start from my high school until my senior year. And I started at right offensive tackle my senior year. And I was going to play division three football. And it, yeah, I was looking at like Heidelberg, Mount Union and Ohio State just happened to be a happenstance thing. I was on the high school track team and uh, I became the number one shot putter when uh, the guy ahead of me didn't go out for the team for my senior year. So we had a track meet at Ohio State. So, yeah, I'll check it out. I applied to Ohio State. I didn't think anything of it. You, you apply to Ohio State. Obviously, I'm from eastern Pennsylvania, so I still wasn't very familiar with Ohio State. I went down. I fell in love with the place. But to get back to your question, so I got on campus. I asked around, started working out like kind of like in uh, the French field house. How do you make the team? You got to try out for their winter conditioning program at that time. So their winter conditioning was extremely tough. Uh, I think that was the hardest part of being on the Ohio State football team. And I was out of shape. Uh, I tried out the first day, embarrassed myself, didn't make the team. Forgot about it for a while. But what I did is I just started smiling and dialing. I called their football office now. This was an Ohio State program at this time that came off a loss against Air Force, which was worse than what we what we witnessed uh, in Dallas. That was probably one of the worst Ohio State losses ever. And that's before they had to transfer portal and opt out. So it really wasn't the excuses you have here today. But I think their recruiting class really got hurt for 1991. I think they lost a lot of key recruits. I already thought John Cooper was going to get fired. So I think I was in the right place at the right time. So I called up Bill Conley, great guy, recruiting coordinator. I want to walk on to Ohio State. I went to see him. I was honest with him. I said, look, I tried out, didn't make the team. I think he liked that, that I was honest. I thought at the time I probably shouldn't have said that. He said, work your ass off. So in the summertime, you know, I just started running and I didn't really understand even what to do for conditioning. But I went down when he told me to try out. I, I ran a 40-yard dash. I ran just a couple of other drills, and, and I made the team. So I, will that happen today in modern college football? I don't know if that's possible, but that was my story. So I've, I've been writing this script in my head for a couple years now, Mike, since I've known you. One of my favorite scenes in the, in the war go, Ohio State's Rudy story, is you working at Geauga Lake SeaWorld in Northeast yeah. Ohio. And you're getting yourself in shape. And there's a scene in my head where you're running <laughs> around where Shamu is. Yeah. And he's following you <laughs> as you're, as you're running. <laughs> and you have this conversation with Shamu. Like, and he's, That's funny. <laughs> that, I think that would be fantastic. I also came up with another scene of you as, a, as, as little Mike Wargo sitting down. You, at the time, you're your dad's remote control because there was no such thing as a remote control back then. And he's watching Penn State football. And you've got, you, you, you know, you've got the Penn State's iconic coach on the sideline. And you're thinking, one day, I'm going to play for him. And then when you're Ohio State's Rudy and you run out onto the field, yeah. I might be stealing your thunder here a little bit. No, and I apologize. Not at all. The one play you get in, it's against Penn State. Talk about Joe, irony. Joe Paterno's over there, and, right. and you run out of the field, and you see that man, and you flash back in your mind as that little kid in <laughs> eastern Pennsylvania with your dad watching Penn State and Joe Paterno on the television. It I got this. We got to get this time. thing made, man. We got to get this made. This Let's is millions. <laughs> I got a question here from you from a fan, Donald Hoffer II. Mike. As an alumni, he's, he's pulling off the conversation we had before he got on. As an alumni, how would you feel if a TTUN player transfers to Ohio State, particularly if they are a part of the current TTUN roster? Ooh, that, that's happened, one. hasn't it? Hasn't that happened in the past? Then we have a Michigan guy come down at a buck guys. Bourne. I, Zach Bourne's older brother, yeah. That's right. Okay. I'm, Hey, welcome aboard. You finally saw the light. That's the way I look at it. You know, I mean, you got a Michigan guy that's leaving. Think about that. He's leaving Michigan to come to Ohio State. I couldn't imagine ever. And I think we're all the same thing. I couldn't, not any bone in my body would ever want to transfer from the Ohio State University to go to Michigan. That's like, you know, Benedict Arnold or what have you. But, hey, you know, the person saw the light. Obviously, with the transfer portal, if you have a bad day of practice now, you can leave. Back when I was there, back in my day, it was a major decision to transfer. You had to sit out one year at least. And if you wanted to transfer to another school in the Big Ten, you had to sit out two years. But now you have a bad day of practice, you know, 
coach, uh, coach uh, told you to shut up or something, you can just transfer. I wouldn't have a problem with that. We'd welcome him with a, as far as I'm concerned. Now, if he transfers back to Michigan, we're going to go chase him up there and, uh, you know, give him a talking to. But uh, I don't have a problem with that. Chris, you got any questions for our buddy? I'm just trying to calm down. And my blood I know. My, Chris and my, I my, both my are like, eh, we don't bit. want them. But, uh. <laughs> oh, I, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's just from a player perspective. I, you know, I mean, uh, maybe it wouldn't I, be a smart idea. Who knows? I get that. But I know it happened with Bourne, right? I mean, I know there was somebody who left Michigan and went to Ohio State. So, yep. you know, I mean, let's face facts with the players these days. I, you know, and, and that's one thing I think I hope that we can kind of rejuvenate. I don't know if the rivalry is as strong as it was, you know, with the whole modern college football. I hope it is. But, you know, I want to see players not dancing around before the game. I want to see players trying to start fights with the Michigan team next year. That's what I want to see. Hey, yeah. man, there's too much of the there was way too much of the TikTok y yes. stuff. I they were doing I, that before the Michigan game. Not not man, it, it they they lost. You know, we had we had um on our show, we had Master Teague the third on a couple weeks ago. I saw that. And one of the things that he that resonated with me was his conversations he had with Urban Meyer, and he said Urban used to tell him be violent. He would walk by him and yeah. just say violence. Yeah. Like I feel that Ohio state has lost that, that drive, that killer instinct, that hatred in that game. And it, I think it stems from the, the belief of the whole tough love moniker that Ryan day has. I think yeah. Ryan day needs to throw that out and just say, it's, it's tough hate at this point. Like, well, I, lo I love Ryan Day. I think he's a great guy. He's done more for a guy like me that's a former player than any other coach. Like, you know, now I get a, a game a year I can go to that's covered by the Ohio State University. I never had that. You had to get varsity O tickets if you wanted to do that. I'm three three hours away. But I get a game, a picnic. They invite you out to practice. They really want to have the former players involved more. And I just think he's a great guy. But let's face facts. He needs to go undefeated next year. Looks like he's made some great moves in the offseason. Obviously, crush that team up north. It's got to be brutal. It's got to be, you know, 100 to nothing. He said lay 100 on him. We got to lay pretty much close to 100 on him. It's got to be convincing, and it's got to be – we have a new athletic director now. You know, he's not going to be under Gene Smith anymore. You knew Gene Smith wasn't going to make any moves because he's retiring. We got a new guy now. And – you know as well as I do, if it's another loss to Michigan, that could be the end for him. So I hope he really goes undefeated and does great and we can move forward. But, you know, if, if the problems aren't fixed next year, then it's really time to start looking for somebody else. So let me ask you, Mike. Um, we, we've talked about crushing. We've talked about uh, – Eric talked about bringing out the violence a little bit. You know, Ohio State made a, a – addition here recently that uh, bringing back Anthony Schlegel as part of this team. Yes. This guy is equal parts toughness and absolute crazy. Yeah. And that guy that ran on the do field think, probably do you think that that's a, <laughs> do, Yeah. Do you, do you think that is part of getting the toughness back, bringing in guys like Schlegel and Laronitis? I, I think so. I think you got to get back that toughness, but, you know, it's it, it like Urban Meyer. You get somebody that comes in there, Urban Meyer, I heard the first day of practice, he starts running those guys. You know who the tough coaches were. Uh, the tough coaches on Ohio State, like our defensive coordinator, was Bill Young. He's a great guy, but he's not a guy you wanted to upset. You know, he, he would make you run. He'd make you do bear crawls. We need to have a little bit of that fear, you know, back in. I understand being a player's coach, and it's probably a little bit different, but there are coaches where, you know, it's my way or the highway. I, I've had coaches, even though I was a walk-on, you ever put into practice like that again, we're going to throw you off the team. You know, I had Coach uh, Coach Young say that to me. He's a great guy, and it motivated me. You got to have that sometimes. And and just the Michigan, we got to get back to it. And you get like an Urban Meyer, that kind of just, you know, not be nice. We're not going to be dancing before the game. We're going to be, you know, pushing people around in the tunnel like we did before. But I think, you know, this is easily – that's just my opinion – they could lay 100 points on him now. Hairball will left to wherever he wanted to go. You know, we got who? Sharon Moore stepping up to be the coach. So we got to lay 100 on them this year. We got to get vengeance for the last three years. 
<clears throat> Question from Nick Quint. Mike, when being on the roster, what opposing stadium had the best atmosphere that you got to attend? Uh, I was a walk-on, and the way things work in the college football world is there is the regular squad, which has about 100 to 110 people, but the travel squad only traveled about the 64 people. So I very, very rarely ever made a travel squad. I made it for bowl games. So I can't really answer that question. Um, I went to some bowl games. I went to the Hall of Fame Bowl. I went to the Citrus Bowl, went to Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. But unfortunately, I wasn't a traveler. Uh, my senior year, I blew my knee out. I was hoping to make the travel team then. But uh, you have to travel to go to the away stadium. You have gotten to go to a lot of bowl games, uh, especially yeah. recently here. What's the best stadium outside of Ohio Stadium that you've ever been to? As, as, as just a player? As, or no, just as, as, spe a spectator. as a spectator? I, you you got to like that AT&T Stadium. That thing's something else at Jerry Jones World. It's uh, it's pretty intense with that huge, uh, huge television. Um, last year, uh, the uh, Mercedes-Benz, those stadiums are just insane. I mean, it's just – just incredible and got to do uh, got to do like so, some of the VIP experience there. I, I had a package where you can get like, you know, food and meals and things like that. So I think those two were really incredible stadiums. Cool. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we need to take a trip to Pittsburgh for the NCAA yeah. tournament. We're, let, let's meet up. Um, I, we need to get Aaron who's, who's, he's away this week on, on guard. He's a part of the national guard. Okay. We need to get him. We'll do a road That's trip, awesome. come over to Pittsburgh, hang out, watch some basketball, have some steak on a stone. Hit the casino. Hit the casino Hit the for casino. Chris. All right. Watch, watch Chris lose all his money. Uh, <laughs> sit back and watch and laugh. I don't know. Um, I think we need to make have a good time at this, Mike. Um, we got the spring game coming up. Are you yeah. are you coming? I am. What's the date of it? I think April fourteenth or. 13th or 14th? 13th or okay. Let me look there. it up real fast. Yeah. yeah I'll so, be there. That's fun. Yeah, let's look at the calendar here. Let me pull up the calendar real fast and uh, see when April, the Saturday in April, is the 14th. Nope, that's a and, Sunday. And that's, one, that's one of our favorite 13th. parties of the year that we have. I, I really enjoyed that. That was a year. lot of fun last year. So Saturday, April 13th, spring game, Mike Wargo at the OHIO podcast tailgate. We're going to have him with us. We'll try to get someone else as well to come. If you are planning on coming to the spring game, you need to come and, and come to our tailgate um, and have okay. a great time, man. We It was awesome last year. Wargo got to sign a bunch of autographs. Yeah. We watched a woman hit a parked car. Uh, yeah. That was <laughs> That was that was a great time, and then she tailgated with us, so it was cool. Uh, yeah, well, I felt bad for her. She was like tailgating alone over there. Eric, her friends bailed on her after she hit the car. I mean, well, yeah, there was some embarrassment happening there, but uh, yeah. um, Brian's hoping he gets to come to the spring game. Us too, Brian. It's it's a it's an absolute blast. Um, we had a great time last year. We're looking to have a good time this year as well. We had a great that. time. And you guys really made a great call on that. I remember that day when we were talking and you said the offensive line has a lot of question marks. And, you know, you said that during the spring game and we did have a lot of question marks with the offensive line. And that's what I was most disappointed with in the Cotton Bowl. It just seemed like those guys, you know, were, were getting pushed around. So, but, yeah. you know, it's a new year. We'll, uh, we'll put that in the past. And, uh, you know, Kyle McCord's gone, so we can move on from that. We got some some great talent coming in. So I hope Ryan Day goes undefeated and puts a hundred on Michigan, and we can move forward from there. Chris Smith, he was there. Spring game tailgate was a good time last year. Everyone needs to show up. That's right, Chris. It was. Uh, we did have you there. It was awesome to have you and Jay. Um, and um, we had family. We had friends. We had Mike Wargo. Gave away some great prizes. We gave away prizes. We had drawings. We had Big Nut show up. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And you know another good, a lot of fun too, is is if you live in eastern Ohio or in the Pittsburgh area, you can go hang out at Mike's Beer Bar with the OSU Alumni Association. This guy's there. He has pinatas, uh, 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 Buckeye cakes. It's a blast. Tell everybody about the Alumni Association there in Pittsburgh and uh, about the, the watch parties you guys do. Mike. Well, our Alumni Association, we're only three hours away, so there's a ton of Pittsburgh Buckeyes. And uh, I'm vice president of the club. 
and uh, John Ruffley's our president, and uh, we do watch parties. So if you're ever in town, Mike's Beer Bar is right on the North Shore on Federal Street across from PNC Park. So come visit us. So for the game watches, we do, as I said, a Michigan pinata. If you spin and win, you can beat up that pinata. You get a $30 gift card to Mike's Beer Bar. They have 500 beers. They also have food if that's not what you're into. Uh, we get a Buckeye cake. Uh, we also do... Uh, uh, we also do uh, different kinds of prizes and everything else. And as I said, if the NCAA vacates this title, which I don't know why they can't do it in a timely manner when they say uh, we're going to vacate the national title. Now, everything I've ever hoped for with Michigan this year goes absolutely the wrong way. So <laughs> I'm not holding my breath. But a hardball did lose today, so that was good. But if they, if and when they do that, we're going to have a tailgate spectacular, and it's going to be a dress rehearsal. So we're going to have the Buckeye Band. Um, I could do a song before I get off here tonight and uh, a Buckeye band and uh, we're going to play Buckeye songs and it's just going to be a whole dress rehearsal for the year. And we'd love to have you guys there do a live broadcast, uh, you know, from uh, from there. We're going to try to really do it up. So uh, but yeah, during the year, uh, come on out and we got 50 50s, all kinds of fun stuff. So and if you're in the Pittsburgh area, consider joining our club. We do yeah. events. We're doing a. Basketball game watch, I believe, March third. I'm in the well, Delaware. I'm in the Delaware Alumni Association Club, and awesome. I'm I'm really thinking about going ahead and just signing up for Pittsburgh to be in the. <laughs> We'd love to have you, man. We'd <laughs> I love mean, to have you. It's so yeah. like no nothing against the Delaware Club here, uh, but uh, your club is off the t- is off the chain, as the kids say. It is a lot of fun, man. Thank you. We always have a ball when we go down there and uh, go, or go head east over to Pittsburgh. And it's never it's boring. Awesome. It, no, it's never boring. It's not. And, <laughs> and we're undefeated, Mike. We're three and zero oh in watch parties when we're with you. If there's a national championship game, you guys are going to kidnap you and make you show up at the. Uh, at the <laughs> well, you know what? Ball. Maybe even uh, make a trip over for uh, an away game next year against that team up north. Yes. Not this coming season, but the one following. There yeah. you go. I want to go uh, to the Ohio State Michigan game, but I have so much fun. That's our biggest party of the year that I haven't made it out to like an Ohio State Michigan game in person in decades. We well, just you know what's sad, fun. Mike, is I'm actually up in Akron every year at Thanksgiving. So I need to really make that one hour, one hour and a half drive over. We love Bring that. Bring my wife over next year when you guys have the have the uh, Michigan party. It's always it's always a great time when you come, and uh, that's you know hopefully we'll be celebrating a lot. And, and I, we're due. I mean, this is, yeah. I, did, how much did that hurt watching Michigan win that national title? That's like your nemesis, the person. Everybody has a nemesis growing up. And it's like that person took your job, your girlfriend dumped you, or your wife dumped you, and that, that nemesis is there hanging out with your wife. It's like, that's what it felt like. It's like, you know, the person you could not stand is having all this success. So we got to change this immediately and go forward. And of course, you know, they cheated. We didn't. So we're going to have fun. I mean, it's uh, 2024 is going to be a great year. Nick Quint, I would like to be a part of Alumni Association Northwest PA here. There you go. So here's the deal, Nick, if it's all right with Wargo, uh, I'll share, uh, uh, Nick, I'll share your information with Wargo or, or yeah. I, think I, got, I think I have your email, Nick. I think, I think you emailed me. I'll send that to Wargo and we'll get you guys hooked up, man. Have you be a part of uh, the alumni association there? It's a lot. It's We'd awesome, love to dude. have you. Um, if you go uh, Pittsburgh Buckeyes, I'm looking at the uh, Pittsburgh Buckeyes. You'll see our website. There you go, Nick. OSU Alumni Club of Pittsburgh. Here we go. So if you go Pittsburgh Buckeyes, it's OSU Alumni Club of Pittsburgh. That's our site, pittsburghbuckeyes.alumni.osu.edu. So that's our information. It tells you how to join. We also have a Facebook page, OSU Alumni Club of Pittsburgh. But if you do pittsburghbuckeyes.alumni.osu.edu, we'd love to have you. But join us for our game watch. Uh, We do updates on Facebook, and uh, we got some parties planned. And what's awesome about the the group there in Pittsburgh is there's a wide range of ages and people. Like you've got young right out of college You've got people who remember Woody Hayes when they were in in, in college right. and everybody in between. Um, uh, and they all get along great. And I love how after every game we sing Carmen, Ohio, man, put our arms around each other. We sing Carmen, Ohio. It is awesome. 
Love that. Love that association. I'm going to sign up. Uh, Nick, if you sign up, I'll sign up. How about that? When Nick signs up, I'll sign up. You got two members tonight. Well, let's uh, give him a three Joe. for Eric. I'll throw my name in the ring. All right. All right. I'm sharing it on our Facebook page. Everybody's going to be so fired up. There you three. Yeah, and, and, and now that I means we I, might have to make more than one trip a year over, though, Eric. Uh, you guys are I'm, welcome anytime. I'm all for it, man. I'm all for it. It's one of my favorite trips, absolutely. Uh, so we'll have Mike Wargo at uh, um, the uh, tailgate there for the spring game. You said you got something special prepared for us tonight, Mike Wargo. Oh, okay. So let's. Uh, uh, um, uh, we have a Buckeye pep band and, uh, the caller that just, uh, the person that just sent in, if he plays an instrument, we're looking for new, new people. All right. Let's hear I'm it. I'm going to play. Um, I'm going to go over here so it doesn't jam up the sound. I'm going to go over here and play a great Buckeye song so we can move forward for the year. Okay. It's going to start in two seconds. All right. <laughs> There we go. All right. I love it. Sorry to my neighbors. <laughs> love it. I love it. I love We're it. We're going to crack it. It's going to be a great year. It is going to be it. You know, the first year they had the 14 playoff, Ohio State won it. Yes. And I feel like this is going to, I feel like this is going to be the year. BTB, beat the blue, beat those bums, however you want to look at it. That's going to happen. We're going to have to get those t shirts. Uh, guys, I got brand new t shirts on the way. They cool. will have the brand new logo on it. They will say official, uh, official OHIO podcast member. Uh, up on the on the left chat on the left chest if you we're going to create a membership on the youtube so when you sign up for that uh, membership you will get a free t-shirt we will get that to you so my, be on the my face is not on them is it eric no your face is not Thank on God. there chris <laughs> maybe we'll throw that on the on the hey. on the btb shirt i just want to congratulate you guys you really are growing this thing and it's it's a super podcast you're doing really awesome things with this and uh I'm just uh, I'm just really, really happy to be doing this and happy to have met both of you. I mean, it's just a, a great experience and congratulations on all your success. Oh, we appreciate Thank that. You. Mike, you we we have been friends and acquaintances since really almost since the beginning. Uh, you were one of the first guests we had on and uh, you've always been so generous with your time uh, with us. And we truly do appreciate that. And we appreciate our friendship with you and that, that Buckeye brotherhood bond Buckeye. that we share. Um, and so it's always good to have you on. And, uh, I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart, guys, be on the lookout for a lot of great you. stuff. Thank you. But, uh, there's going to be a lot of great stuff heading your way. Every uh, guys, make sure you hit the like button, share, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already hit the bell. So you get notified a lot of good content coming your way. There is some big, big news heading your way. You ready for this? We are way ahead of schedule on the call in show. We got a brand new phone. We got software. We ran a test. We were missing a couple things. We ordered those things. They arrived the very next day. We tested That's again great. and it was successful. We have one more test to run. And if that test goes well, hopefully maybe this week or next week, we will be ready for the call-in show to start. That's so cool. I'm so the, psyched about that. The call-in show cool. is we're, we're aiming. We were aiming for March. I would say tentatively right now, the first of March is when we will be able to launch the call-in show. So in four weeks, if all goes well, maybe even sooner, uh, if we're able to get those tests run. So the call-in show is coming. It's right around the corner. Really looking forward to that. And then you guys can call and argue with us. You can call in and tell us how great we are. <laughs> you can call in and say, I want to talk about this or that. Whatever you want to do. Like it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh, so that's right around the corner. In April, this is not April Fool's joke. In April, right before the spring game, there will be a huge announcement that we are a part of. 
Nice. Uh, I have been working behind the scenes with JR and some other friends of mine, and there is something huge coming. So much so that I'm going to share this right now with all of you here real fast. Let me see if I can, can find what I'm looking for. Um, and then we'll, we'll end the show here. Um, here we go. I found it. Here it is. Uh, let me make sure it fits the screen here. I got to crop it. Uh, where's my ratio? There we go. All right, here it is. You guys ready for this? College podcast realignment is coming. <laughs> now, I know what you're saying. What in the world does that mean? You're just going to have to wait. But I have a great news. We're a part of it. We are a part of it. So it is going to be huge for this channel and for all of you Buckeye fans. And that is coming in just a couple months in April. Mike Wargo, thank you so much. Where can thank everybody you, get a hold of you, follow you, or or if they would like to to uh, follow you on Facebook or whatever? Uh, Mike, uh, Mike Wargo, it should show up there. Uh, and uh, if you want to follow our events for our alumni club, it's uh, OSU. Just do a Facebook search, OSU Alumni Club of Pittsburgh. There you so go. So have all of our latest events. We got a basketball game watch coming up, I think, March 3rd. And then, of course, uh, we're going to – the minute we find out that the, the NCAA does the right thing and vacates this title, I'm planning a party. And it's going to be huge, and uh, we're going to hopefully get a ton of people there and some Michigan pinatas and, uh, you know, set them on fire outside or something. <laughs> Mike, Maybe. Mike, my friend, let me just make one suggestion. Uh, you got it. When it comes to that basketball party, drink heavily. It'll make it easier for you. Well, yeah, that's I saw that, and uh, well, you know, we'll see what this new athletic director goes. You know, nobody's safe now with this new guy coming in. So, yeah, it is sad. You know, you always think they're going to uh, it hurts. to do well, and then you know, it's just it just seems like there's structural problems there where they just I don't know much about basketball. I don't follow too much, but I did see that score. Yeah, it was rough. That was rough. I yeah. would purposely not talk about it because I know I know a lot more about basketball than than football. I played it, coached it, lived it for many, many years. I can't stand uh, watching Ohio State basketball. It's awful. It's, yeah, I, I just it hurts. never, you know. All right, we're going to do this on our way out. Mike, thank you so much for coming on our way out. We're going to play our new intro again. If you missed Ooh. it at the beginning of the show, our brand new intro uh, for 2024. So we're going to play this on our way out, everybody. Remember, be kind to one another. I owe someone's OH and sing Carmen, Ohio. Oh, hey. your heart. OH! Oh, yeah. Go Buckeyes. Happy New Year's, guys. Go Buck.